Good evening, my fellow scientists. I'd like to give you a brief update on the all iron battery. For those of you who might be new here, for the last year and a half to two years, we have been working on this tiny iron cell. It's an iron cathode and an iron salt anode that makes an electrochemical battery that you can use to store energy. Because it's all iron, it tends to be fairly safe and fairly re uh, inexpensive as well, because iron is fairly cheap. Now, over the last two weeks, we've been working on expanding that to a much larger version of the cell. This is the 200 milliliter iron cell. And my student Nico has been doing a great job over the last two weeks building an enclosure for this cell so that we can have multiple all iron cells stacked up back to back to build an iron battery. Fortunately, that particular cell leaks a little bit. So we're working on building a little better one higher quality plastic and some better assembly techniques that will introduce pinholes because it turns out this uh, sulfate electrolyte is really good at escaping through tiny pinholes. But we have some electrochemical data to show you so let me go to that. So here's the first major discharge curve where we discharged at 30 milliamps for 27 hours. That discharge almost down to zero potential on the cell, but that's zero potential under load, right? That's zero potential while we're still discharging. If we were to then decrease the current a little bit, we'd get more potential and thus could discharge more current. And if we sort of inch up on that, that zero potential end point, we could get quite a lot more charge out of this particular cell. So I'm confident that we're reaching a 20 to 40 percent of the iron available is actually being used by the reaction and I think we can probably get that number up with a little bit of effort. So I'm excited about the actual capacity. This translates into something on the order of two to four kilowatt hours per meter cubed. So if you took a battery the size of a uh, air conditioner unit for your house, you could store up about three or four hours worth of electricity for your house, or a lot more than that if you had a very efficient house. Here we have the charge discharge curve. So this is after fully discharging, we then charge it up about 10 or 20% of the way and discharge it again. You can see that it holds up to these sort of repeated cycles of charging and discharging over and over again reasonably well, and doesn't seem to be degrading over the course of at least 12 hours. So if you like that kind of thing, I hope you'll tune in on the regular. We update with progress on the all iron battery and we will soon submit the plans for building that. As soon as we get it submitted, we will release it online uh, for your amusement. We're gonna open source all of our plans and we have our crowdfunders to thank for that. Crowdfunding support has made this possible and has supported Nico through his summer and now fall research. So much thanks for crowdfunders and much thanks to Nico for his hard work. So tune in next time. We'll see you then.